Hi, my name is Zhong Zhen. I'm excited to present our paper titled, Let's Get Visical, Perceptual Accuracy in Visual and Tactile Encodings. On behalf of myself and my co-authors, Dr. Christine Williams and Dr. Emily Wall from Emory University. Since data visualization emerged as a research field, scientists have incorporated findings from visual perception and cognition to develop effective and efficient ways of communicating data. Data physicalization has garnered recent interest, building upon momentum in data visualization, tangible user interfaces, and data accessibility. For data physicalization to be effective, however, we need a better understanding of the unique affordances and strengths each perceptual modality allows through different encodings. Our work builds upon seminal work on graphical perception by Cleveland and McGill. They study how accurately people are able to characterize data using nine different elementary graphical encodings. They found that people are more or less accurate at perceiving relationships among data depending on how the data is graphically encoded. This ranges from being the most accurate when data is encoded as position along a common scale, ranging to least accurate when data is encoded as graphical shading. Numerous replication studies and variations of Cleveland and Miguel's work have since been conducted and validated their findings. Hence, what we know about visual perception has thus been built upon these stable empirical building blocks. Motivated by these contexts, we address the question, what are the comparical empirical building blocks for tactile graphics and data physicalizations? We conducted a study to assess how accurately people can perceive data relationships when they're visually encoded as SVG shapes on a screen compared to when they're tangibly encoded using swell paper to raise the image above the page. We tested six elementary encoding studied by Cleveland and McGill, including length, area, position on non-aligned and aligned scales, curvature, and shading. For each encoding, we asked participants to compare values for six different proportions ranging from 25 to 75%. This resulted in a total of 36 trials per condition. With IRB approval, we recruited 12 undergraduate students and paid them $12 per hour for our one-hour study. Each person was assigned to begin with either tactile or visual encodings with the order counterbalanced. For each trial, we asked participants to identify whether the left or right shape encoded a smaller value, and to estimate the proportion of it as compared to the larger using a percentage between 0 and 100. In general, we hypothesized that participants would be more accurate with visual encodings than tactile, and they would perceive tactile encodings in a different order of accuracy than visual. They would experience higher cognitive load when using tactile encodings compared to visual. And finally, they would think that they were more accurate when using visual encodings. In the results, we found that participants were not significantly more accurate using visual encodings than they were with tactile encodings, although participants had a slightly greater number of accurate answers in the visual condition compared to the tactile using a matched pair sign test we found that this difference was not significant. For our second hypothesis, we found that on average, participants had a slightly lower absolute error in the visual condition than the tactile condition. After applying an aligned rank transform, we used a repeated measures ANOVA and found a significant main effect of condition on participants' accuracy when making proportional estimates. For our next hypothesis, we observed minor differences in the visual condition's order of accuracy compared to Cleveland and McGill, and drastic differences in the tactile condition. On this slide, Cleveland and McGill's order of accuracy is shown on the left-hand side, order from top being the highest error with the lowest accuracy, to the bottom with the lowest error and highest accuracy. In the visual condition, our order slightly differed from Cleveland and McGill's, and our data we found that curvature and shading flipped positions with curvature showing the highest error rate. Similarly, length and position non-aligned flipped positions, although the differences were marginal. In contrast, we saw a more drastic deviation from Cleveland and McGill's order in a tactile condition. Participants were the most accurate at judging proportions when data was encoded using length. This was followed by position non-aligned than area. Surprisingly, the visual condition's most accurate encoding type Position aligned 
occurs fourth in the tactile perceptual hierarchy. Subsequent home adjusted contrast tests revealed that most of the mean absolute error for each of the encoding types did not significantly differ from other encoding types with one exception. Curvature was the only encoding type that has significant differences from five other encoding types in the visual condition and four types in the tactile condition. To assess cognitive load, we asked two questions adapted from the NASA TLX. Participants rated the tactile condition as requiring slightly higher mental demand than the visual condition, and tactile was also rated as more frustrating, although neither of these differences were found to be significant. For our last hypothesis, we asked participants to self-assess how accurate they believed their responses to be on a scale from a 1 to 7. Participants indicated that they felt they were more accurate in the visual condition compared to the tactile. Using a Wilcoxon signed rank test, we found their self-assessments to be significantly different. To summarize our findings, we found that the encoding condition significantly impacted participants' ability to judge proportional differences accurately. Specifically, visual encoding appeared to be more accurate among participants. We observed some minor differences in the order of accuracy of elementary visual encodings compared to Cleveland and McGill, although it may be due to our relatively small sample size. We found that the order of accuracy for tactile encodings differed from visual, with length emerging as the most accurate tactile encoding. We did not observe any meaningful difference in cognitive load between tactile and visual encodings, but people did feel more confident in their performance with visual compared to the tactile. These findings ultimately inform us that it is likely misleading to directly apply findings from perceptual accuracy of visual encodings to their tactile counterparts in data physicalizations. On this slide, we show a chart that has raw estimation error for tactile encodings on the left and visual encodings on the right, both as a function of true proportion. We fitted a degree 2 polynomial for each encoding type within tactile and visual condition separately. Notably, we see that there is a tendency for systematic overestimation for two visual encodings, curvature and area. We also observe a trend of systematic underestimation for shading in the visual condition on the right and position aligned length and shading in tactile condition on the left. This begs the question, how should design guidelines account for the tendency to over or underestimate certain encoding types? For limitations and future work, we want to emphasize the primary limitation of our findings is based on the homogeneity of our user group, which consisted of 12 CS undergraduate students who, relative to the general public, have high levels of data literacy and low levels of tactile acuity relative to the individuals who may have experience with Braille, for instance. In future work, we will explore whether the tactile hierarchy that we determined remains consistent for individuals who are blind or have visual impairments. In the end, we want to thank you for listening to our presentation. Please read the paper for more details.